Hello and welcome to Platypus Scotsman. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, welcome all those first timers and welcome back to those who have been here already and, and uh, possibly seen a, view, a video or two. Anyway, this video is going to be a little bit interesting because it's not really a replicate type video. It's more of a concept idea type video. The reason I say that is because you will not have the same bits that I have. You will have different bits. You'll have different access to things like that. I've been collecting for quite some time and I couldn't tell you, I most of the bits I have, I couldn't tell you where I, I, I got them from originally. Uh, I am now collecting new bits like I did buy a 135th scale German half track and I bought a battleship and I bought a A-10, I think in 148 scale. Anyway, I am peaceful and peace million from those, but my older bits, I couldn't tell you. And some of the ones I used on this, I couldn't tell you. So uh, yeah, it's one of those videos. It's more of a, this is kind of like, get some ideas from this, use this. It's just one of those things where you just kind of piecemeal everything together. Anyway, let's go. I finally have a reason to use these. Uh, kind of funny, I was looking at the expiration date. 12, 26, 12, I've had them that long. And uh, Damian Larson in the game store a long time ago got me onto these. I saw them on his table and wanted to make something out of them and just never got around to it. And now that I'm doing steampunk, I have a perfect reason to start using them. These are from paper towel holders uh, at work. They would take the almost empties out and this would be in one end to help them move. I grabbed them because I thought they were cool. First time I tried to pull a couple out, I broke them, but I got to where they pulled out and just still happened there. They weren't perfect for inside of there. So I'm gonna glue this in here and we're gonna make some, I don't know, something to uh, block line of sight or inhibit line of sight. That's about the only most important thing, right? And just use super glue. One of the things I want to do, because I don't want to see this on top, uh, I'm going to glue some of this on here and then cut it off. This is sheet styrene, it's pretty thin. Well, that one's taller. There you go. Didn't even notice that. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm just trimming this off the bottom now that the super glue is dry. Just use an X-Acto knife or hobby knife, whatever you want to call it. The goal is just to score it and then just kind of work it off. Now that's worked off, I'm just gonna kind of trim as best I can without going too far down or without popping it off. Looks pretty good so far, so I may not have to trim a whole lot. And now what I'm gonna do is just a cheap emery board or a fingernail file or whatever the crap you wanna call it. I'm gonna keep filing that down. I'm solo file that there's a seam on both sides. I kind of want to file the seam as well. Just so it's not glaring. Probably should have did it before I glued that on, but oh well. And then it's gonna just be like this. Where it's just smooth at the top as best I can, or as, I should say as much as I want to. Oh, this one says 12, 13, 12. So these are old and it's kind of nice to use them. I have a whole bunch of them. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna file this down, then once all that's all done, I'll, we'll go from there. All right, I'm gonna play around with some uh, electrical so uh, solder. You always just grab something and look at it and go, how can I use that? 
like, hmm. My wife just cracks up at me. Just file it down, shape it a little bit, just so it doesn't have an abrupt edge. All right, let's try to load it down and see how it works. Okay, so I couldn't get the solder to work, and so I bagged it. And I'm going with the styrene tubing. Oh, this stuff right here. Uh, 1 16th rod. Be your hair. So what I did is I just eyeballed the bottom here. And I did this more for support, but it can be for looks too. But I did it more for support so I could actually have a leverage point. And I just used a drill. So once I got that through there, I just kind of widened it a little bit with the hobby knife on both sides, just so a 1 16th rod could fit through there. Okay, so it barely fits. And that is kind of how to manhandle it. So I did that, and I just kind of bent it a little bit with my, just gave it a little bit of a shape. Held it down, kind of eyeballed where the next bend was going to be. Right here. Be nice if I was working with copper tubing, not copper tubing, brass tubing, and had some benders. That would be ideal. But then I probably still have the pain in the butt to try to glue this thing to it. But the super glue works with plastic pretty well. Kind of over bending a little bit. Just to get the bends right. And then this part right here is the pressure part, is this bottom part right here. So what I'm gonna do is hold that like so, cause this is all straight up here, so that's fine. Just kind of look at it, make sure it's kind of where I want it. Then I'm just gonna throw some super glue in here. Make sure I get all the bends where I want them. Kind of hold it down and let that dry. And so I'm just gonna glue the rest of it and attach the rest and then we'll get back to you. All right, I've just glued some more styrene onto it. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna start pilfering all my bits boxes. I've been collecting through the years. I'm just kind of piecemealing things and seeing what I can find that looks good. And I'll, I'm gonna start slapping those on there. Oh, these other little strips on here are these pieces right here. HO strips, four by four and 10. I went to the hobby store in Salt Lake and picked up a whole mess of styrene. But anyway, you get the idea. I'm just gonna start going through all these. All right, I'm just gonna start gluing parts on. And that's the thing is a lot of these are all going to be unique just because of the bits you use and just the bits you find. So I wouldn't really worry about, uh, I wouldn't really worry about it. I would just start gluing things to it and it comes out how it looks and then it's painted up. So I'm going to continue to glue stuff on just in a random fashion. I'm going to paint this lead belcher. Yeah, lead belcher. I'm still used to bolt gun metal. And for those who have airbrushes, yeah, go ahead and airbrush this bad boy, but I am not going to. I have an airbrush, but I've made the decision not to use airbrushes on 
this main channel. So, but not everybody owns one. Anyway, that's what I'm gonna do. And if it's a little streaky, it's a little streaky. I'll just add to it when I wash it. But yeah, an airbrush would be slick. You'd be done in a heartbeat with this. But anyway, gonna paint away. I want a blue tint to this. Uh, I don't even know the name of it yet. Uh, object, <laughs> this refinery or this air something or another. Anyway. I want a blue tint to it, so I'm gonna paint some Drakenoff nightshade to it. However, this is kind of a dark color, so what I might do as I'm doing this, is I might just dip my, ooh, I about spilled that over. I might dip my paintbrush in some, uh, well, I guess it'll work. In some water to dilute it a little bit. Yeah, that's a little thick for me. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna dry brush the original color, uh, Lead Belcher. I wanna be careful not to get too close to the joints, at least on, on this part of it anyway. And I'm also not too concerned with dry brushing underneath here. I kinda of wanna keep that dark, just for shade, just to drive the illusion more. All right, because my eyes are going bad, I have to use a magnifying glass to paint things. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of give a breakdown on what I did here. And this is kind of what you can do on any piece you want. You don't have to stick to a color, but uh, Mornfang Brown, I did a base coat on these strips right here. And then I just did the top uh, Warlock Bronze. Inside this right here is uh, this yellow. And then I used uh, this bronze right here. And I painted these strips right here. I think this piece right here. And then I came back with this uh, old gold and I painted this, circles here, uh, that there, and I already say that, that, and then this, and then up here. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go and hit some areas with uh, Nolan oil and then uh, come back and I wanna add some color. And so I'll make these buttons or lights or something like that. and. I'll go through and do that. Oh, and I also hit this right here. These panels right here. This, that. Um, these three right here with uh, this oily steel. And the, the idea behind it is you're just kind of trying to give uh, a little bit of variation so it's not all the same. So it just makes it a little bit more interesting uh, in what you're doing. And then through your uh, weathering and things that you do, like that, you can add to it as well. But anyway, gonna do that and go from there. All right, I went through and did some uh, Ever Suns, what? No, oh. <laughs> Eagle Sun Scarlet, some Techless Blue and Moot Green. And I just went around and painted different things on it uh, just to give it a little bit more color. And now I'm gonna do a uh, Selective known oil washes over everything. I want to stipple some Mornfang Brown on this just to kind of give it a little bit of rust here and there. I don't want a lot. Maybe at the bottom it's okay where water would settle more, but I don't want these to look like they're semi-maintained and it's the future so the metal might be a little bit better, but I don't know. It's not post-apocalyptic, but it is 
kind of sci-fi and cyberpunk. So, I want streaks more prevalent than the rusty spots. I'm gonna go through a sepia now and just start doing some streaks. And I'll layer them, they'll be thin. And just layer them as I go around, just rotate the, uh, whatever this is. Still haven't come up with a name for this yet. All right, I have some half-track decals I'm just gonna use to put on this. Since I have them, I bought a half-track so I could use the bits out of it. And I might as well use the decals too. I don't have any solvent or whatever it is to melt the decals, so it's gonna be what it is. Now I'm just going to get some sepia to dingy them up a little bit so they're not so pretty looking. All right, I ended up using three colors to kind of dingy up. This was just to get paint on it, so this stuff stuck to it. But Morphing Brown did it very lightly, then Sepia, and then the, the Drakonoff Nightshade. Well, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope everything made somewhat sense. Now, there are some things I didn't really show in this because like I said before, this is a concept video. It's one of those things where you just kind of piecemeal it together. Like this is styrene tubing. And I just 45 it and glued it together and attached it to the side. Uh, these strips right here on the side right here, those were just cheap styrene strips that I bought and glued them on. And it was more of a concept kind of idea just look in your bits box, go buy sheet styrene, and uh, just assemble it and uh, do that. I did show the part that was a little bit more manipulative where I manipulated the sheet styrene tubing. Solder, uh, I couldn't do it with the gel glue, but with the liquid super glue, worked fine. I was like, what? So gel dude, my gel glue didn't work, but the other did. So that's why I was able to put these, uh, these, uh, <laughs> so these solder pieces on there, these solder tubing. Uh, other than that, it was just uh, these little dots right here that I painted as buttons. I did want to point that out that that's a, I think I've done another video, but that's a 3 16th uh, paper punch, hole punch. I just went to the craft store and bought a 3 16th, it, no, not 3 16th, what am I thinking? 1 16th. It's a 1 16th hole punch, and I just punched some sheet styrene. It's also good for rivets if you don't have rivets, if you don't have anything to make rivets with. That's cool too. And then I just piecemealed other things and other bits. So it's really hard to say, duplicate this piece 
because I can't even tell you where this aerial came from. Uh, but I did paint the aerials kind of like new jewels. So if I'm, pl I'm sure there's plenty of talented painters out there that can show you how to do that. But that's pretty much what this is. It's just one of those things where it's a concept because the likelihood of everybody, able, everybody being able to get this piece right here is not that great. And I just happen to get lucky and do it. So anyway, if you want to see more detailed pictures of this, you can follow us on our Instagram page. There'll be a link down here, not a link, uh, a little icon right there that will, uh, you can go visit our Instagram and see more pictures of the things that are, we've done. I'd like to thank the our patrons for the support of the, this channel and those who uh, come back and make comments. And also too, if you have questions, comments, leave them uh, below. I'd be more than happy to uh, answer what I can and and so on and so forth. But anyway, like it's one of those things where it's more of a concept idea. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And just, you know, I've had these probiotic things forever. I have all kinds of stuff that I've just had sitting around for a long time and now I have a reason to start using some of it. So that's cool. I'm excited. But there's other things that Damien showed me that I'll be showing in the near future, hopefully, that he used on his train a long time ago when I saw it in a hobby store. So I appreciate him with his willingness to share. Hope you have a wonderful night. Hope your hobby is treating you well and hope everything's going good for you. And remember what my mother used to always say that anyone could do art. Ciao.